here I have an iPad mini 6 that I'm having an issue with. And this is what happens when I try to turn it on. You get a flash of an Apple logo and then nothing. Let's see if we can figure out what the issue might be. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do after disconnecting the battery and the display is take a close look at the connector. I can see that there are definitely some interesting marks on the sticker that surrounds it, which is typically from pressure from the components trying to poke through the sticker. Let's peel this back and see if we can visually see anything that's just off here. And on first look, we've got, doesn't look like there's any issues here. Though I do see under this kind of underfilled component, you know, what looks like a, a burnt mark. Oh yeah, and it's just kind of falling apart. Look at that. Let's take a look under the microscope and see what we find. All right, so here we got this kind of charred looking component. And as I'm scraping at the top, it's definitely, definitely noticeably, it's definitely burnt. And here I can actually start to see that there's a crack going through it down the center there. It's definitely bad. I'm gonna take some heat here and scrape away the underfill. Didn't have it hot enough there, so I scraped a little bit of the top coat. That's no big deal because it's a ground plane, but let's get this all isolated, add some flux. And to make life easier, I'm gonna add some uh, low melt, or this is 138 solder paste to help lower uh, the temperature I need to get this to. And I take my hot air and tweezers to it to carefully remove it without pulling any pads below, and there we go. Now here I found a similar component because we don't actually have the schematics for the iPad mini 6. This looks exactly the same, uh, and it's kind of on the same circuit, so it should work. And I'm just gonna compare it here side by side. And here we can see they look very similar, which isn't always the best thing, just to guess and check like this, but it's really the only option that I have. So I'm gonna also add some 138 to the sides of these to help kind of make it easier in the removal. Take my hot air to it and get the solder to melt so that I can pull it off the board and move it over to our uh, uh, iPad mini 6 board. If I haven't mentioned before, this was off of an iPad mini 4, which I don't have a donor board for the mini 6, otherwise I'd be using it. All right, so we'll get this to flow into place and gently nudging it around until the solder sucks to itself and pulls it down to the pads. Like that, there we go. Perfect. Now here, just to double check, I'm gonna look at the component here and we can see that this, uh, this side of it says it should be reading uh, around 0.3, which it was reading 0.8 before. So um, just count here, eight. So let's go check pin number eight and see if we've got a good reading now at uh, around 320. Get my multimeter, set it to continuity, red probe on ground. And here I've got, yeah, 0.3. So that's good, but let's just double check the pin here. Yep, that is looking good. Got continuity across this. So yep, we should be good. So I've got that component that was burnt replaced. Let's connect up the screen and see what happens. There's both connectors and now we'll just, now we'll connect the battery and let's see what happens when we try to power it on. Flash, still flashing. All right, so I just tested and I found an odd reading here. We're also getting a high reading. So I think it might be this component that's under the shield down here. So this component is definitely important for the display to work. Um, so I think that if we take a look at that, we're probably gonna find something. So here I've removed the shield and it's pretty obvious that we've got a burnt component. 
Yeah, that looks pretty bad. And it looks like the, the uh, pad is fused to, uh, to that half a component. So I'm gonna add some flux, take a little bit of 138 down there and add it to the, uh, this little cap here so that it wants to come off. There we go, we'll add some to it. And to the other side, if I can, I'm gonna add it to it, but it looks really fused to that pad. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get down there, um, but I'm gonna try anyway. So uh, taking some hot air to help and we'll pop that one side off. That look came off good. Add some more flux here. And I'm going to remove this big cap that's sitting here so I can uh, just not have to contend with it at all. There we go. Now that's out, that's out of the way, I'm going to carefully go in and see if I can get this to move. And you can see that it's the, the pad under it is just moving. There is no getting around basically losing this pad, so I'm going to see what I can do to salvage some of it. And uh, there we go. Yeah, we're left with a little bit that I think I can work with, so uh, I, it's basically what we're going to have to do. Otherwise, I'm going to I'll have to run a jumper. Uh, I think we've got enough there to work with it, so. All right, let's take a look here um, and see if we can find a slightly larger filter. This one as well, it uh, doesn't really say what it is, but I can tell just from experience that this is gonna be uh, a filter of, it's probably within range that it'll work. Could technically run a wire, but I want to be a little bit more safe than that. So I'm going to take some 138 so I can loosen this up and remove it. Get it completely removed from there by using some hot air. Now we'll put it back and put it in place and look. And I can tell that it's the right, at least the right dimensions. Whether or not it's the right component is another story, but it should be the same type and this should theoretically work. If I had a schematic, I would know if it was gonna work. And then of course, let's put back the big big cap so that uh, even though I probably could leave it off if I really needed to. So after having replaced both of those components that were burnt, let's test it and see what we get. The damage is done probably could, could have been avoided. I'm assuming the battery wasn't disconnected when the display was connected itself. So, all right, let's see what happens here. Power button and there we go. Got a broken display, but we got the Apple logo. Touch is working. I definitely got an issue with this display. I'm gonna try another one here in a second. All right, so I've got a new display here and let's just test it out. I think this was a really kind of dumb move of Apple to put the battery connector right under the flex cable there because it's gonna make it so that a lot of people accidentally compress the battery connector before they have the display connector compressed, which is gonna cause issues like this. Here, now we'll connect the battery up and let's give it another test. And there we go. Apple logo, no issues with this display. Test the touch everywhere. Make sure it's all working. And we're good to go.